We are in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Uh, this week, that's John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Uh, last week, we were in verses 12 through 18. I had other plans, but I believe the Spirit has led us back here today, not only to talk about the power of Pentecost, but the power of God, but also the Spirit of truth. How many knows that we need truth? Amen. Uh, so we're going to talk about the Spirit of truth this morning. There are a couple of things that I'll have you repeat with uh, me that are in this text just to bring emphasis to them. John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Say another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth. Say the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. Look at your neighbor and say, you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Well, last week we began this series of messages about Pentecost and the power of God. And this week, I want to talk a little bit about the spirit of truth. I think it's essential that we talk about that. Uh, last week, we talked that Jesus was about to depart. He had told his disciples that I'm going to be departing. And they were in a transition. They were in a season of preparation for things were going to change forever. Uh, when he left and he departed, and he went to be crucified and to be buried and to resurrect on the third day and then ascend to heaven. How many knows that the Bible tells us that he told them to wait in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Spirit, to endue them with power from on high. And from that point on, things were never the same. They were in a season of preparation here for even greater things. And I spoke that word. Uh, not only to us individually, but to us as a church. You see, I believe that we are in what the Bible calls the last days, and that in the last days that there will be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and that the purpose of that is that souls be saved, that people be one to the Lord uh, before the coming of the Lord. And so look at your neighbor and say, we're in a season of preparation for even greater things. You see, Jesus said, in order for you to be ready, I'm going to send you another helper. Aren't you thankful for another helper this morning, the Holy Spirit? He said, I'm going to send you another helper who will help you do not only the works that I have done, but even greater works. And we talked about that those were not greater as in uh, more powerful or more dynamic, but simply greater in number. Here is Jesus. Think about this. He's ministering, he's feeding into 12 men, and he is developing them as leaders of the church. And he is somewhat limited, I will say this, because he is flesh and blood, but yet he is the Son of God. He cannot be in two places at one time when he's here in his earthly body. And he is feeding into them, and he is developing them, and he's causing them to be the leaders that they're supposed to be. But now that he is gone, and he said, I will pray to the Father. I will pray to the Father, and he will send another helper to you. So now, each one of us, if we know the Lord as our Savior, there is the Spirit of God inside of us. And he is developing us, and he is using us, and he is training us, and he is teaching us. And so now, other than just 12, there are multitudes and multitudes, thousands upon thousands of believers who can minister to other people. Isn't that awesome? That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, we need another helper. The purpose of all of this is to give glory to Jesus. And as I looked at this, the word that struck me 
in all of this, I had, as I said, I had plans to go a little bit different route. And I looked at that and it kept jumping out at me. The spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. I believe that we live in a day and age of lies and deception. Can I get an amen? Uh, it seems that we don't hardly know who to believe, what to believe. Is there a source of truth? How, which direction do we turn? And so we are in a famine of truth in our day. But Jesus told the disciples, I have an answer for that. And that answer is the spirit of truth. As we look back, if you would go with me, to 2020, here things begin to change. And I don't know about you, I can only say what I felt, and I was searching for answers, and I was searching for truth. What should we do? How should we do it? And I struggled to find a source of real truth in the world. I didn't know who to believe or sometimes what to believe. I didn't know uh, if this media source or that media source was reliable. I didn't know if there was a reliable source of media. You see, I remember a day, and this dates me a little bit, although I was young whenever this happened, but I remember 6 o'clock news, Walter Conkright, uh, and we would believe that what he said was truth. Now, whether it was truth or not, we had a belief that it was truth, and we had an assurance, a hope that what he was telling us was truth. But this day and this time and this age, we struggle. There is a crisis. Uh, this morning, I said that there is a famine of truth in this world. But yet Jesus said that I send you a comforter. One who will come alongside. One who is the spirit of truth. See, I believe in many ways the pandemic, and I'm sorry to bring that up, but that's, that's how I relate to this. In many ways it revealed the weaknesses and the frailties of the church. Capital C, the church universal. Not specifically this church or another church. But it exposed uh, some things during this time, and, and many churches and many people were struggling. I believe uh, the enemy was putting questions in our mind. You, you see, we ought to question, but we ought to go to the Bible as our source of truth. We see that there were questions like, will we live in fear? Will we allow the world system to continue to tell us how to live? Would we abandon Going to church. You see, there is an importance in going to church. I'm glad to see a good number here this morning. And the Bible tells us that we are to assemble together. Now, I know that we live in an age of technology, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate Pastor Jason, and we are literally able to send the gospel message uh, across the world. There are many countries and many places that are hearing this message uh, weekly. But what I want you to know is that if you can assemble, that the Bible tells us that we are not to fail to assemble, even more so as we see the day of the Lord approaching uh, and so it's important that we assemble together. Uh, and there was a question about, would, should we assemble? How should we assemble? All of those questions. You see, the devil wants you to not know the truth. The Bible tells us in John eight forty four that he is a liar. That not only is he a liar, but that he is the father of lies. He invented lying. He first lied to Eve. And he has continued to lie to God's people ever since. He is the father of lies. Revelation uh, 12 tells us that he is the deceiver of the world. And so uh, we cannot find truth in this world for he is the God of this world is what the Bible tells us. In many churches during this time abandoned their faith, closed church doors. But here's the good news, is that there was a remnant of faith that held strong to the Lord. 
that believed that God was still on the throne, that believed that what God said was true, that believed that you could trust His Word. There was a remnant of people uh, who continued to believe. And can I tell you, while uh, it exposed many weaknesses of the church, I believe that even today that the church of God is stronger than it has ever been because it has went through the struggle, the trial, the thing that tried the faith. How many would say that you're stronger today? Amen? You see... We need this spirit of truth to know how to believe and what to believe. There's always been an issue of truth. Always. We think about our time and we think, well, I don't even know who to believe, what to believe, how to believe it. I don't know if I can turn on the 6 o'clock news. I don't know any of this thing. But a search for truth has always been an issue. When Jesus stood before Pilate, the Bible tells us that uh, there was a question uh, in Pilate's mind. And Jesus uh, began to tell him about his kingdom. He said, if my kingdom was of this world, then they would have fought for me. But my kingdom is not of this world, it is of heaven. And here is uh, what Jesus said to him. He said, for this purpose I was born. For this purpose I have come to the world to bear witness to the truth that's why jesus came to bear witness to the truth you can know truth by knowing jesus then he goes on to say everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice look what Pilate said what is truth what is truth you see that age-old question what is truth uh, how do I know truth? How can I uh, relate to truth? How can I search out and seek truth? It's been there all along. And it is something uh, that we need to deal with. The Lord uh, said to his disciples, I have given you the spirit of truth. And here Jesus introduces the answer. To a world that is in confusion, to his disciples, uh, who don't know how they're going to make it without him around. And he said, don't worry, boys. I've sent you the helper. I've sent you the spirit of truth, and he will provide the answers. He's going to provide the truth to you. He's going to prepare you. What I want you to see this morning is that the world cannot receive the spirit of truth. There's a reason why they look at us, especially Pentecostals, and they think, them people's crazy. There's a reason why. is because they don't know the truth. They don't understand that we are rejoicing because we have been saved. They don't understand that the blood of Christ has paid for our sins. They don't understand the joy that we have in our hearts and lives because they don't know the truth. They don't know Jesus. So they walk around and they make fun of us and they uh, make light of us but the spirit of truth will teach and train us the spirit of truth is not popular in this day and age because there is a spirit of lies and deception that is prevalent you see the bible tells us that we deal with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places there's deception there's principalities of deception and lies and all of those things at work. And we, in this day, must know the truth. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to have the truth. you got to have the truth. How can I know the truth? You, you see, I believe that, uh, and it's honestly, it started even when I was in college. And that's been a while, folks. I know I look young, but that's been a while. And there was, in an ethics class that I took, there was a question. What is truth? Is there absolute truth? Is there a source that you can know that it is real? You see, the world has held on to and they have grasped it, that there is no absolute truth. And the problem with that 
is that when you believe that there is no absolute truth, then you have to come up with truth on your own. The world would say, your truth is not my truth, and my truth is not your truth. And what happens is there is mass confusion, and there must be uh, something that will reveal to us the truth. And it is the Spirit of God that will reveal the truth unto us. It will keep us from believing the lies and the deception of this world and of the God of this world, of the enemy of the devil. The problem with coming up with your own truth, Proverbs 14, 12 says it this way. There is a way which seemeth right unto man. You see, each one of us, when we're born, we believe that we know the right way. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Can I tell you that you cannot trust your intellect? You cannot trust your feelings. You have to trust the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And that Holy Spirit works and it tells you what is right and what is wrong. It leads you down the right path if you allow it to. And you must have the Spirit of truth living and breathing inside of you. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to have the truth. How do we know that the world doesn't know him, doesn't know the spirit of truth? 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says this, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. But can I tell you as a Christian that you're different? You are not blinded. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9, that you are a chosen generation. Somebody help me preach. That you are a royal priesthood. That you are a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of God who has called you. From where? Out of darkness. Praise God, I'm not in darkness anymore. Praise God, I can see the light. Praise God, I live in His marvelous light because I have been called out of the darkness of the world. I have been pulled out of it and I now can see the light and I know the truth. You got to know the truth. It's important. I, I believe that the enemy tries to mask what the truth is so that we won't know what it is. And you cannot know the truth without Jesus. For he said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the truth. He's the way. He's the life. He's the one that helps us get through. He's the one that helps us to discover truth because he is truth. We can know the Lord. We can know Him because we know the truth. The reason the world can't know Jesus is because they cannot spiritually conceive of Him. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned the world can't know jesus because the spirit of god is not inside of them to reveal the truth of who he is but the good news is when we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light that we can shine that light into a world and they will begin to get glimpses of who Jesus is. They'll be led to Him. They'll be able to be saved. They'll be able to be filled with the Spirit of God and they will know the truth. It's so important to know the truth. You must know the truth. Truth is important. It only comes from the Spirit of God. But I want you to know that the Spirit uses the word not only are you left to what is the spirit telling me can i tell you the spirit will reveal things to you the bible says that he will reveal things that are to come but the spirit of god uses the word of god to reveal things to you to reveal the truth 
And so it is that Spirit of God. Can I tell you, when you begin to read the Word of God, when you pick it up, one of the most important things that you can do, and you need to make a practice of this, is begin to pick it up and begin to declare, Holy Spirit, I need your help. I need your help to understand this because my natural mind won't understand it, but I know when you begin uh, to lift that word up, I know that when you begin to cause revelation to come to that, that I will know the truth. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that leads us into the truth. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the truth, that guides us and guards us. When Jesus was praying for his disciples he was just about to leave just about to be crucified and he said this sanctify them with the truth and then he left no question about what the truth is the truth thy word is truth second timothy 3.16 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. John 14.26, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And then John, in his first chapter in his gospel, he said, and the word became flesh And dwelt among us. And then he described Jesus this way. Full of grace. Hmm, Isn't that wonderful? How many need the grace of God? Uh, We all need the grace of God because we sin and we fall and we come short. But not only was Jesus full of grace, but he was full of truth. You see, with only grace, uh, there is a hyper grace. There is a grace that says you can live just any way you want to. But the truth of the word will tell you that there is a way to live for the Lord, a way of righteousness, a path uh, that God will lead you down. And so it is the Spirit working through the word and through truth and through His grace that helps us to live the life that we ought to live. It's the Spirit of truth. It's for our day. We need it. Jesus had been teaching the Jews, and some of them believed, and this is what it says. He said to them, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. He didn't say if you abide in CNN. He didn't say if you abide in Facebook. Some of you need to hear that. You're on it too much. He didn't say if you abide in Snapchat. Uh, I'm getting a little younger now, ain't I? Uh, He didn't say, you know, if you uh, abide in this uh, TV program or that TV program. He said, if you abide in my word, then are you my disciples. And you will know the truth. How many need to know the truth? Amen. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Do, do we have anybody here today that needs to be set free? I, I think we live in a world that needs to be set free from the lies and the deception and the contradictions of this world. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And it is the truth that you know. Hear me. There's importance. The way you know the truth is to study it to get into it, to consume it, to work with it and allow the Holy Spirit to work with it. And it is the word that you know that will set you free. There's a world that is bound by addiction. There's a world that is bound by sin. There is a world that is controlled by the enemy. But it is the truth, hallelujah, that will set them free. Aren't you glad you know the truth? Aren't you glad you have the source of truth? Now what will you do with the truth that you know? Will you help people get free? Will you help people get set free from spiritual bondage? You see, that's what sin is. If you're here today and you have never given your life to Christ, never been saved, then you, my friend, are in bondage. 
You're held captive by the enemy, the devil. But today, you've heard the truth. What is the truth, Pastor? The truth is that Jesus is the Son of the living God. That God sent Jesus to this earth, that He was born of a virgin birth unto Mary. That He lived a totally sinless and spotless life. And because of that, the religious leaders of His day decided that they would crucify Him. And they did. They hung Him upon a cross. They put nails in His hands and in His feet. They pierced His side. And He died there on the cross. I'm speaking truth today. And they buried Him. And He was in the grave dead for three days. But something happened. You see, something happens when truth happens. And the truth is revealed. And on the third day, He resurrected up out of that grave. And now the truth is that you and I who has received Christ as our Savior, that we shall live because He lived also. It's the spirit of truth. And that simple version of the truth will set people free. How many would say, I've been set free, Pastor? I've been set free. I know Him. I know the Lord. I've been set free by His Spirit. It's a spirit of truth. And today we have been empowered by God. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to know the truth. We have been empowered to do what is right and to live it. We have been empowered to know which direction to turn and how to follow Jesus. It's the Spirit that does that. And my friends, we are empowered to overcome the lies, the tricks, and the deceptions of the devil and of this world if we know Christ as our Savior and the Spirit of God lives inside of us. It's the truth. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. And to know Him, to know the Spirit is to know the truth. The enemy wants to keep you blinded. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till the enemy has a chance to get in your heart and in your mind and tell you something that is not the truth. Hear me. This is coming from the Spirit. Don't wait. Today is the day to know the Lord as your Savior. Today is the day, if you are saved, to get set free from some of the things that bind you. Because even though we're saved, we never live a spotless life. And there are things that try to bind us and keep us from walking the walk that we need to walk. And it's the Spirit that reveals that to us.